What's up? This is John from John Bench for Photography, and we're just halfway through the year. 2020 has been an interesting year to say the least, and a lot of industries are really hurting right now. I hope you all are doing all right, you're safe and staying healthy. If you remember at the beginning of the year, I made a video talking about the seven essentials to start a photography business. And you all absolutely love that video. I got a lot of great responses from it. And you also had a lot of questions about other things like insurance or how to become a sole proprietor, an LLC or anything of that sort. So I think it's only fitting to go ahead and talk about seven more essentials to starting a photography business. If you haven't had a chance to check out the first video, make sure to follow the link up above, watch that first, and then come back to this one and watch it. We'll add it all together and make it a big kind of suite of what you'll need to start your photography business. And I know you may be thinking to yourself, because of the pandemic and not being able to go out as much, this is not the time to start a photography business, but I would say this is the best time because now that we're all stuck at home and we have a lot more free time, I would say practice your craft get everything set up, get your business set on a good foundation and so that when things are back to normal, we can go ahead and start rocking out your business. So definitely use this time to build yourself up and let's talk about seven more essentials to starting a photography business. Starting out with one of my largest pet peeves, which is getting a legit email account. Now what I mean by a legit email account is having a custom domain email. So instead of having at Gmail or at Yahoo or at Hotmail or whoever you're using, you can have at yourcustomdomain.com. I cannot tell you how much I hate it when I'm emailing with a business or somebody and they're trying to act all official and everything and you look at their email and it's at gmail.com. Like I get that it's free, but it just doesn't look as professional as it could be. And also getting a custom domain email is not that expensive. If you already got your website and your domain, which we talked about in the last video, you already have your domain, you've paid for that, and it's only $5 a month with G Suite to get a custom domain email. And mind you, this is the exact same email system as Gmail. It is Gmail, it's just looking more official now. So that's gonna be our first essential. That's just $5 a month to get yourself a custom domain email address. Next up is the juicy stuff which you all have been asking me the most about, which is choosing a business structure and getting your DBA. Now the disclaimer for this is I'm not an expert on any of this stuff. So if you need more information about it, you'll need to search online for your specific state and what you should do. But I'll give you my personal opinion. But yet again, I'm not an expert in this area. I am not liable for anything you do on your end, but I'm happy to give you my own personal experiences and opinions. So for choosing your business structure, this has a lot to do with how your business looks and how you're gonna be paying taxes. Personally, I think the easiest way to start out is just by being a sole proprietor. Now, the reason this is, is because while you're a sole proprietor, you and your business are not separate entities. You are one and the same. So when you make money, it's you making money, not your business and something else. If you're going to go the sole proprietor route, you do need to get a DBA, which is doing business as. This lets people know that when I say John Branch Photography, I'm John Branch doing business as John Branch for Photography. And that's personally how I started out. DBA with sole proprietor. It's easy to manage your money. You pay your taxes the normal way you would. You can file it all together. Just make sure you're definitely paying your taxes. Don't skip out on that. And it's easy to start that way when you're not making a whole lot of money. Once you start getting up to around six figures or so, you may wanna look into getting an LLC. When you're LLC'd or a limited liability company, it's gonna protect you and your personal assets. So if for any reason you get sued, they're suing the business and its assets, not you and your assets. Yet again, an LLC separates you and your business, so now you're two different entities. You have John Branch, the person, and John Branch, the business. Rather than as a sole proprietor where it's just John Branch making money, we're gonna sue him and take his money. <laughs> so it varies in different states, but here in North Carolina, getting an LLC was about $125 and getting a DBA was about $26 or so. And if you're feeling overwhelmed with how to sign up for any of this stuff, the easiest route to take is going through something like LegalZoom. I don't have a lot of experience with them personally, but I know it's easy, it doesn't cost that much, and they're very quick about filing that stuff for you and getting you set up. So let's go ahead and add in choosing your business structure and getting your DBA. That's 125 and 26-ish. Yet again, it varies from state, 
look up what it is exactly in your state. Now that we've picked our business structure, we need a business banking account. With business banking accounts, there's a whole bunch of different options. And yet again, I'm not the hugest bank account person in the world, but I have been a huge fan of online bank accounts recently. I've been using Simple Bank for years now for my personal finances, which led me to Novo Bank for my business. Novo is an online only business account, which you can use on your phone. It has a debit card that comes with it. You can use it with Apple Pay and it's all online. The biggest con to this bank account is the fact that it has no physical banks so you're not able to deposit any cash. Now, if you're a business that doesn't take a lot of cash, that's not a problem at all. I don't deal with cash, so it's cool for me, but if you need to be depositing cash, you may wanna go the more traditional route with something like Chase Bank. Novo Bank has no fees. It refunds you for any ATM fees. It's really good overall, and I've been using it for a while now and absolutely love it. You can see here, it shows me my money in, my money out. It's very straightforward and easy to use. There's a link in the description below that you can check out the bank if you're looking for something online. It's super easy to sign up. They're very quick in the turnaround time. And then you can just go ahead and start depositing money in it. There's no minimum fees, nothing. It's really, really cool. And if you're up on online banks, I would say definitely check it out. The other route again is something like Chase Business Banking, which for them, they have a $15 a month fee or you have to hold a $1,500 minimum in your bank account at all times. So for someone with a small business, that could be kind of rough. So definitely, definitely check out Novo Bank because that works better for me. I don't have to have a minimum. I don't have to pay any fees. The only thing I can't do is take cash. So let's add a business bank account to our list and I'm gonna put that at $0 with using something like Novo Bank. Now that we have our business account, we're able to make money, we're all LLC'd up, we need liability insurance. Especially as a wedding photographer, or honestly any working photographer where you're working with clients, you need liability insurance. If something happens at a shoot or someone gets hurt or you break something, you need a way to be able to finance that stuff without it eating your whole business alive. I personally use the Hartford or Hill & Usher for my liability insurance. They're really awesome and they're actually not too expensive. I'm paying $600 for the year and getting a million dollars worth of coverage for my own gear and for anything I may break or if anyone gets hurt. Now, obviously that rate is gonna change depending on how much liability insurance you need and what state you're in, but 600 a year is only like 50 bucks a month or something, so it's really not that bad to get insurance for yourself. I'm gonna leave a link in the description below for Hill & Usher so you can check them out. I've had a great experience with them so far and I've been using them for like four years now. Liability insurance is one of the things I got pretty early on because yet again, I'm not trying to have anything happen while I'm at a wedding and not be protected. Another option if you want something a little bit cheaper is going with Professional Photographers of America. I actually pay for both PPA and the Hartford together just to have more coverage overall and more ways that I could be helped if something happens. So far for PPA, and I don't know if it's changed, I'm paying about $30 a month for that and I've been doing that for pretty much my whole career as a photographer. So for liability insurance, let's add that to our list at $50 a month. This is something you definitely wanna get. Don't shy out on this. If anything else, follow everything in the first video and get liability insurance, really, you need it. Don't let something go down and not be covered. So we have our business all set up, we got everything we need, we're making money, things are going great, and now you need good accounting. For accounting, obviously you can do this yourself, but it takes lots of hours and honestly, if you're not a tax expert, you're not gonna be helping yourself out. You could be losing out on money or just missing certain things that you should be tracking on your taxes. So for that reason, I use Bench.co. Bench is an online accounting service that will go through all of your income and all of your expenses, put it together for you, and also send it off to special CPAs and get it all ready for tax time. And there's not much of anything you have to do. I've been using them for almost a year now. I signed up in the past, stopped for a little bit because I wasn't making enough money, and I've recently re-signed up because I just couldn't stay away from how good their system was. They have really awesome communication, and you can meet with them and or message online about different expenses that they'll ask you about, and make sure that everything is being tracked correctly. I've had only the smoothest experience, and you can kind of see my bench here, all the details and information and my expenses and income and stuff. It's really, really awesome, and then I don't have to do as much because I've wasted years of my life sitting around in a Google Sheet trying to track all my expenses, and trust me, it is not the way. If you want it to be legit, 
If you wanna make sure that you're paying taxes correctly, Bench.co is the way to go. I have a link in the description that'll give you 20% off of your first six months. And keep in mind, there's no contract. So if you sign up for a while and then you don't like it or you feel like you don't need it, you can go ahead and cancel it at any time, which is the most awesome part about it. Bench comes in at about $159 a month if you're paying monthly or $139 if you're gonna pay it all up front for the full year. Keep in mind too, if you pay a full year and cancel, you get a refund for everything you paid. That's what I did the first time I used them because I ended up not needing it, but definitely check them out. There's no reason not to try it. So for our accounting and taxes, we're gonna add that to our list at 159 a month. Our next essential is probably one you've always asked yourself about, which is how do I get more clients? And that's through advertising. Now, advertising can range on how you're gonna do it, but the biggest thing you all have to realize is you have to pay to play. That's just what it is. Don't think that you can do everything only through word of mouth. Now, you can get a lot of business through word of mouth, but especially when you're getting started, you're gonna have to pay something. Be careful about wasting all your money though. Don't just be throwing money all over the place and advertising for no reason. Be smart about it and think about different places where you can advertise. And that's what I wanted to talk to you all about right now. So a couple of ideas for where to advertise. You have Facebook ads and Instagram ads. Those are probably the most straightforward and honestly, in my opinion, is the best place to advertise. Everybody's on Facebook, everybody's on Instagram. I get most of my work now from Instagram without even having to advertise, which is why advertising on those platforms helps even more. If you're able to get work from Instagram by just posting stuff and posting stories and add advertising to that, it's really gonna boost your sales and just work overall. And mind you, with advertising this way, you can pick and choose when you wanna advertise, how much you wanna advertise, and just going from there. Some other options for our wedding photographers is things like The Knot. I used to get most of my income from The Knot. They are a little bit expensive, and in the past, they used to work amazing for me. Things recently have been kinda of, eh, so be careful with The Knot. They're expensive, but they are a great place to advertise if you're a wedding photographer. Local magazine publications is also another great place to advertise. In North Carolina, I have stuff like the Carolina Magazine and Hearts of Wedding or something of that sort. I can't remember all the names, but there's a couple of good publications that people in my area are gonna be reading. And it's usually cheaper to do something like this than going on a national publication like The Knot. So definitely look into your area, look at what kind of magazines they have for your style of photography and see if you can get some advertising in there. That stuff ranges usually around $200 or $500 for your publication that will run for maybe six months or so. Wedding Expos is another great place to advertise. And the great thing about Wedding Expos is you're seeing your clients face to face. So they get to meet you and have a better experience before they think about booking with you. So Expos or Wedding Expos, they cost usually generally around a couple of thousand dollars or just a thousand dollars flat. But again, they're usually like a day or two and people are getting actual FaceTime with you. So that raises the sales much better. I found the most success through doing local wedding venues and things of that sort. And last but not least is word of mouth or getting featured on blogs online. This is huge because you don't have to pay anything for that. Getting featured online is you do a great wedding, you do a great photo shoot, that stuff ends up online, everyone sees it, they go to it, they're like, oh wow. You can also boast that you've been published in whatever magazine or online, and that just gives you more word of mouth, and it also helps your SEO. Earlier this year, I actually had something featured on Essence, so now I have that link linking back to my website, helping my SEO, and also giving me more word of mouth. So definitely try to get published online, on online blogs, or wherever you can. So while adding advertising to the list, I'm actually just gonna say $250 a month. You can pick and choose where you wanna do that. You can do it only on Facebook, you can do it on Instagram, you can print whatever you want to, you can pay a local blog or magazine, there's just, all kinds of ways you can approach that. I think 250 is a good kind of starting place. Yet again, don't waste all your money here. Just do what you need to do, see how it's working, and then kind of figure out what works best for you with advertising. So, so far we have our legit email account. We've gotten our business structure down. We have our business bank account. We have assurance. We have accounting. We've advertised. And last but not least is one you may not think about, but tracking your mileage. 
tracking your mileage is hugely important because it's something you can write off at the end of the year on your taxes. If you're ever driving to sessions and you're not tracking it, you're missing out on a lot of stuff you can write off. Now, I'll have to give a quick moment of silence to my favorite way of tracking, which was the automatic. <laughs> I'm so sad they closed. I was a huge fan of the automatic. Basically, it was a little thing that you could connect onto your car and it would track literally on your car, but they went out of business since the pandemic. So I've changed over to Mile IQ. Mile IQ is an app you can get on your iPhone or your Android phone, and it tracks basically anytime you drive anywhere. It works off a of GPS and it's easy to use because you don't have to do anything. It just tracks it automatically. Now it is free to start, but that only gives you 40 drives a month. So if you're driving a lot, even for personal stuff, because it tracks that as well, you're gonna go through that 40 really quickly. The great thing, however, is it's only $59 for the year, which is like absolutely nothing. So you pay for that, you track all your mileage, and you can easily just swipe left or right really quickly to tag different drives and tell it that it's business or it's not. Also, while you're tracking those drives, you can put a purpose to it as well. So for me, I can say this was a portrait shoot, this was an engagement, this was a wedding, and have all that stuff tracked for me right in the app. Again, that thing is free, so definitely check it out. Go to the App Store, search Mile IQ. I'll put a link down below as well so you can get to it, but it's really awesome. I've been using it only for a little bit now, because like I said, again, Automatic was my main go-to, but they went out of business. So Mile IQ has been working really well for me. And again, you may not have thought about it, but it's actually very important because you can write off your mileage on your taxes. So let's go ahead and add that to the board. It's $5 a month. Trust me, you're gonna need to track your mileage. So definitely, definitely check it out. And those are our seven more essentials to starting your photography business. We have an email account with a custom domain at $5 a month, figuring out your business structure and getting your DBA at about $150. Remember, this is a single time payment and it varies depending on your state. A business bank account for free if you're using something like Novo. Insurance with Hill & Usher at about $50 a month. Remember, this will range depending on how much coverage you need. Accounting with Bench at around $159 a month. Advertising at $250 a month. This is give or take, you can spend more, you can spend less, and you don't have to do it every month. And your mileage tracking with Mile IQ at $5 a month. So the initial investment on this video is actually only around $620 a month. Or if you wanna pay it all up front, around $3,200. Add that in with the last seven essentials and you're looking to totally start your business at around $5,000. Again, that may seem like a lot of money, but if you take the time to save it up and or if you're only paying monthly, once you start generating revenue, $5,000 is actually not too much. And remember, the main reason I made this video, not only to give you all some options of where you can start and different services you can use, but I really, really wanna put it into perspective that you can start a business. You can start a business. You can do it. It's something that I personally never thought I would do in my whole life. And here I am about seven years deep into a wedding photography business, making around six figures. It is possible. So again, this is not to shame anybody on money or make you feel like it's too expensive for you. I wanna give you all the positive vibes that you can start and you can do this thing yourself. So I hope you found this helpful. If you have some other services that you like to use, please leave them in the comments below. I wanna share as much information with anyone and or learn myself from you all. Thank you again for hanging out. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more information on creative entrepreneurship and being a photographer, and I will catch you next time. We're gonna finish off strong and make 2021 amazing. I'll catch you all next time. All right, peace.